I've been trying to get over burnout, and one of the ways I've been doing that is just reviving this old multiplayer game I worked on nine months ago, and I'm trying to just add in new features every so often and get that kind of deployed out. But the thing I want to kind of share in this video, which I think might be useful for some people to watch, is how do I have this deployed out to a live environment? And then also, I have a single VPS that's hosting some other stuff as well. I have a second application that's deployed out there. This is my 20 React Challenges course where I have the actual TanStack app running there and then all the videos are hosted on R2. Okay, so two different applications, both deployed to my VPS. And I wanna walk you through how I have that set up for my Survive the Night game and also how I have Caddy in front of all that on my VPS so they can actually have domains point to it. I think it'd be good to start with a high level in case you guys are curious. Okay, so this is my VPS and on this VPS, I have basically a directory, I'll say root and I'll say game. And then I also have a directory called uh, just a course. And how I set this up, I will be honest, this is a very like rudimentary way to set up a VPS, but sometimes the simplest thing for a small little side project is the best thing. So I created the VPS and then I SSH into it. I made sure Docker is installed. And I also made sure I had like a Git SSH key set up so it can download or clone the repos that I'm interested in directly onto this machine. And I did a Git clone manually into root slash game and then also root slash course. So inside of this, VPS, there's two directories, and inside of that, we have two Docker Compose files. So Docker Compose YAML, one's for the game, and then also one is for my course platform. Now this one involves creating a database. I do think I have a database over here that gets created eventually inside of Docker. I have like a volume mount, and this one over here doesn't really use a database. It's just like a, a web server and a Next.js application to host the application. So this is a simple setup, and I would recommend this for a small site project or like a, you know, a low traffic site. Putting multiple things in the same VPS probably has some additional risks involved with it because if someone DDoSes the game, that means my course platform will probably go down as well. But again, these are all Docker containers, and so you can actually put like hard limits on memory and CPU usage. So if someone DDoSes the game, maybe it'll just crash the game and not actually affect the whole machine at large. But of course, the actual network traffic in and out of the VPS could potentially be a, an attack vector. But anyway, this is the setup. And if I were to go over to the VPS and just say Docker PS, you'll see I have a couple of things running on that. I have the Survive the Night game website that's running on a particular port. I have the game server running. And then over here, I have the actual course platform. I have a Postgres database. And then I have Caddy. Okay, this is something I'll talk about in just a second. And if I check out the actual root directory, you'll see that I have the Survive the Night game, which I get cloned, and also the, the course platform, which I get cloned. But outside of that, I created two files manually. Again, sometimes you just, you know, if you have your own VPS, just SSH into it manually, creating some stuff manually, and defining what you need is a lot easier than setting this all up in a CI CD pipeline. But on a professional environment, you probably want to automate as much as you can so that when you leave and someone else tries to fill in your slot, they can just seamlessly push updates without having to know how it all kind of works. So let's kind of dive into one of the Docker Compose files. So I do have the Survive the Night game here. I'm going to go to the Docker Compose file. And you'll see that I have a website that's set up to build a Docker file that's in this packages directory. So I have like a monorepo set up. I have different packages. So the Docker file here is for hosting the website. I also have a Docker file that's for hosting the game server. This is the actual thing that runs the WebSocket server and all the game logic. I will say there's a bunch of hacky stuff I had to do to like get this working with the monorepo. Like the package has some shared TypeScript files and I had to like make sure those were like copied over before I tried to bundle everything. Kind of a mess. But overall, this is the important part. We have a Docker Compose file which hosts the game and I also tell the website how I can connect to my game server. So I have the WebSocket secure layer here that points to a particular domain. And then I have the game server down here. I think the thing to point out though is these ports. Since I'm trying to run all these things on the same machine, having some exposed port so I can put caddy in front of it and point it to port, you know, 3005 for the game website and 3006 for the game web server was kind of important um, because the other one is also using, you know, similar ports. I had to make sure those were different. And then there's also an external network I had to define. Uh, so instead of typically I define like the bridge network inside the Docker Compose, I decided to make the network be an external thing I defined on the VPS itself so that I could eventually have Caddy kind of hook into that same network as well. Okay, so this is how the Docker Compose file looks for this one. Also for the course platform, it looks very similar. Um, let's take a step back to the diagram and I do want to kind of put another box here for Caddy. So I do have a Caddy instance that has reverse proxy set up. So that when you go to survive the night, uh, 
game.com, it's going to point you to the caddy instance. And also, I have the beginner React challenges, webdevcody.com. Uh, if I could type, that's also going to point to the caddy instance. Okay, so when I set up these domains, which I'll show in just a second, they all point to the IP of my VPS. And then I have a caddy instance, which is also being created via a Docker Compose file. That is going to do a reverse proxy setup so that if someone hits this VPS with this domain, it knows to route the traffic to the game instance or the WebSocket server that's running here. Also with this other one, it'll route to the right um, Docker running container as well. All right, so that's kind of a high level architecture how this is kind of set up. Let's go back to the terminal because I do want to show you. If I were to load up the caddy file, you'll see that I have a caddy configuration that is basically setting up that reverse proxy. So you'll see over here, I have survived the night game.com. It's reverse proxying to a app called website on port 3000 and then survive the night game.com with the web sockets is going to port 3001. It's looking for something called game server. So these are kind of important. I want to point these out. If I were to go, you'll see that there's a game server definition here and there is a website service. I guess you can call that. Um, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if this port forwarding was even impor uh, important. I probably could have actually removed this and it might work the same way. I need to kind of experiment with that. But you'll see Caddy knows how to point the domain. When someone hits that domain, it knows to go to the website that's running on this particular Docker instance because they're all sharing the same network. I Technically, I guess I could put like a little network here. Uh, there's a network called web and all of these are using the same network so that the Caddy instance knows how to kind of like direct traffic to the proper containers. So now that this chart looks like a bunch of spaghetti, let's go ahead and keep on diving into it. I also have this definition, so that if I go to beginnerreactchallenges.com, it'll take you to that Docker container service name, which again is running on port 3000. So that's the Caddy configuration. I do like Caddy a lot. I think there's also something called Traffic that people use. Um, I just like using Caddy, just because I don't want to learn yet another service that does the same thing. Let's look at the Docker Compose file that I have running. So here's my third Docker Compose file, which I didn't document in this diagram. I probably should kind of put one there, which is defining you know where you can load in that configuration file, which happens to be in that same directory. And then also I'm specifying that it needs to use the web network. So they all kind of share the same network resource. But then we also have some ports open so that it can actually have like the HTTPS set up. Um, and then down here we have networks web external as well. Now for the Caddy instance, I manually just did a Docker Compose up from this directory but for the other two i do want to share like how does this automatically update when i push commits to my git repo okay so i'm gonna go ahead and walk you through that as well over here we have a github folder here and inside of that we have workflows and i have a deploy workflow let's go ahead and check this one out this is a very simple rudimentary way to get changes deployed out to a vps so whenever changes are pushed to main we are going to basically ssh into the machine and I just run a git fetch, a git reset to make sure everything on the machine is just reset to whatever the main is. And then I just do a Docker compose up and I just force it to rebuild. Some watching this may argue that this is pretty hacky. There's probably better ways to run this. And I'd be interested, leave a comment below if there's a better way you think I should be orchestrating multiple applications all running the v same VPS. I have found this to be pretty simple and straightforward and it kind of works, right? Now I will say there is a Docker stack approach that you can use that probably might simplify my setup. And I've actually have a YouTube video where I talked about this. I just don't do it on this project for some reason, because again, sometimes the simplest approach, just like SSHing into the machine and just forcing it to pull the new changes, um, works pretty fine. Now, the only issue with this approach is that I'm actually building the image on the VPS itself. So if the VPS is not powerful enough. Sometimes building up images can require a lot of CPU and memory. And so you want to make sure that building images during a deployment doesn't affect the overall uh, health of the machine, right? Doing a simple push to my game might kick off a Docker build, which causes my course platform to kind of slow down or cause issues. But overall, we're not building like some, some big code base, right? We're building something really simple, some TypeScript stuff. So just to kind of document that, when I push to GitHub main, so push to GitHub main, that is going to kick off a workflow which again is going to SSH into this box, and then it's going to CD into that directory, which is right here. And then it's gonna fetch the latest information from Git, and then it just basically forces a Docker Compose up to happen. Now in order for this Apple Boy SSH action, this is like a shared GitHub action, you can use the SSH into a machine and run some scripts. Very cool, definitely check it out if you're trying to do something similar. 
you just have to specify an SSH private key, a username, and also your the address that you're trying to like get into. Now, as far as the SSH private key, this is something you can actually create yourself. And I think I did, and I just added it to my VPS host to get it on the machine so that anyone else with a private key could just SSH into it as well. And it's the same key I kind of share locally. Now, there are definitely more secure ways to getting stuff deployed out to a VPS without actually granting your GitHub action to SSH into a remote machine and get this all running. Again, this is for side projects. I'm not too worried about the security for a game, like a multiplayer game. Uh, but you'll see here, when I do push changes, it kicks off these workflows. And if I kind of watch through these, you'll see that it basically runs that command. It SSHs into that machine. Um, I'm not signed in right now. I'm too lazy to sign in. But you basically see logs of it trying to get into the machine. It runs Docker Compose up. It builds a container, and then it runs it. Now, one thing I'd probably recommend to make this a little bit more secure is instead of SSHing into the machine from GitHub, you should probably be building an image and deploying it. So build and push image into something like ECR or like Docker Hub. And then you could probably still trigger these things to periodically pull for the latest changes. And there's probably some existing setup you could use to make this all seamless. But again, sometimes just doing this stuff manually just helps you understand it a little bit better. And it's not too hard to just manually set this stuff up. But I am curious if you guys have a better approach that you would probably have multiple things running on the same VPS. What approach would you take? Don't say Kubernetes because that's definitely overkill for what I'm trying to do, if I'm being honest. But if you have a different approach like Docker Stack or something custom, let me know. I'm curious to hear how you guys would deploy multiple apps to the same VPS using Docker or Docker Compose in containers. All right, that's about it. I'm trying to get back on the bandwagon of making videos. Um, let me know if there's anything interesting you guys want me to make a video on. Have a good day and happy coding.